Right now, I'm driving in the new 2022 Lincoln Navigator and I'm using the Active Glide feature. And this is a hands-off driving feature that allows me to sit here in traffic and not touch the steering wheel. All I have to do is watch the road and make sure nothing weird happens. And it's the most comfortable, relaxing way to sit in rush hour traffic. Before we get started real quick, if you like this video, drop a like down below, subscribe if you haven't. That's all I'm gonna say. This is the 2022 Lincoln Navigator, and it's not new for this year, but it has been updated with a whole variety of new things, including stuff like grill and new headlights and taillights. It's a mid-cycle refresh, and they've updated a bunch of things on the inside as well. The biggest change you can immediately notice is this screen, which has gone from a 10.1 inch to a 13 point something inch screen. And so that's gotten bigger. This shows navigation, audio, phone, all that stuff. And it uses the same user interface here and on the dash cluster and on the enormous heads up display as well. So they all show the same font. They have little animations when things change, stuff like that. The interior in here is really pretty. They have these sort of piano keys and the, the buttons are nice and they have this open pour wood. This is the black label version. That's the top tier one. It's about $115,000 or so with every single option checked, like this one has, including screens in the back that are really cool. We're gonna get to those in a minute. Now the Navigator is Lincoln's flagship vehicle. They sort of invented this gigantic segment way back 20 plus years ago. I drove an Escalade earlier this year for a week and I did really like it. It's absolutely full of technology. It has enormous uh, OLED screens and things like that. But I think I like the engine better in this. I think I like the interior better in this. It feels more refined. Lincoln calls it the sanctuary. I don't think it quite meets that definition, but it is really nice and relaxing. Let's talk about the exterior real quick. This one for 2022, it does have updated headlights. They're a little thinner than they used to be. LED, they look very elegant and refined, which is what uh, Lincoln is going for. In the back, they have these taillights and there's a little like welcoming LED strip that illuminates as you unlock it and then it sort of disappears as you lock it. And I really like what car companies are doing with those sort of LED light strips to make the car a little more interesting when you approach it rather than just flashing the lights at you, right? Here on the inside, I really like how all this is laid out. You've got the big screen and pretty much everything can be controlled through that, except you have the gear buttons here. And so you have P, R, N, D, and these are, they call them the piano keys. And basically you push down on them to shift gears, right? And at first with something like this, I thought it was a little weird and it was like, oh, I want I want a shift knob or whatever. But honestly, after three minutes in here, you get used to it and you just hit D, to go forward, hit P to park. And if you hit the start stop button up here while you're still in drive, it just automatically puts it into park for you, which is really nice. This is very nice too. And you've got buttons here for the radio, volume knob, tune knob. Okay, so that's what this little section is for. And then this is your climate control. I do wish it didn't have this toggle to change the temperature. You know, you gotta push up to go warm or push down to go colder but you got buttons here for the heated and cooled seats. And that's actually extra neat because it does have an auto mode. And so it'll automatically turn the heated or cooled seats on depending on the temperature of the car and what your climate control is set at. And so basically you just set it on auto. You have three different levels of fan depending on how intense you want it. And then you just leave it alone and you ignore it. You have a little button here that you can press and go and it shows you the menu with additional climate controls. And you have a button there for the heated steering wheel dual zone climate control, stuff like that, or you can press this button and control the rear climate as well if you want to lock out the people who are sitting back there so the kids don't mess with it or just turn it off entirely if there's nobody sitting back there. Or you just leave it and the people in back can control it as well. And that's this whole stack and it seems very simple, but it's very easy to use and it all looks very refined and elegant and I really like that. The controls in the Escalade, which is the biggest competition for this, just seem complicated. They went technology for the sake of technology. And in some ways it works really well, but in others it's just not very refined. Lincoln this morning told me that this has the lowest average age of all their cars. So this is their young buyer's vehicle. And by young buyer, the average person buying a Navigator is 50. It's not exactly that young, but I think 50 year olds people who are a little older 
might not want to control everything through a touch screen, and that's why this stuff is here. So you can adjust the volume, change the temperature, all that. The steering wheel is a little complicated here. On the left side, you have all the controls for the adaptive cruise control and the active glide system, which we'll get to in a minute. And then on the right, you've got a few different buttons to control things on the screen. You've got one button that says HUD, and that's for the heads up display. So you can get right into settings for that. And I really like that because you don't have to dive into the screen to like change the position on it or something like that. You just press HUD and it changes and it says, okay, HUD on, do you want to turn it on or off? And then you can scroll with this little toggle here, go into menu, change the brightness, change the position. Okay, let's change the position and I'll like move it down a little bit and I can see it up on the screen and then back out of it. That's really nice. And then you have some like hotkeys here and I can press that and it controls the audio. And so I can change the audio format. Do I want to be connected to my iPhone or do I want to go to Sirius XM, whatever. And so you just have these little hotkey buttons here and then you get another one that is for the navigation. And so you can like change your route, cancel your route, go home, whatever. And then there's finally a settings toggle. And so it gets you into the menus much easier than like scrolling, scrolling, find settings, hit OK, then go into HUD. That's super annoying. This is much better. I really like this sort of setup. The main problem I have with this is the buttons are really small and sometimes people aren't gonna know what they do and be like, oh, what's this car with all these little lines on it? And what that does is it changes the follow distance for the adaptive cruise control, things like that. Or this button, you press that and it turns the lane keeping system on and off. Okay, fine, whatever. At least when you press a button, it does show on the screen what you're doing. The driving experience, it's not a sporty vehicle, but the steering wheel's nice and the lane keep assist, which if you have cruise control on, is pretty strong. And I can just take my hands off the wheel and it'll steer itself down the road. It looks at the lane lines, figures out, okay, how do I get here? And then I can adjust it a little bit if I want and then let go again and it'll do it. So it is not self-driving because I am still responsible for everything that it does. And it is not hands-free in this mode. And actually, if you look on the dash there, you can see it gives a little warning if you don't touch the wheel. So I can touch it and, and reset it. And so if we look on the dash, it shows a little icon of the steering wheel with two hands on it. And that is to show that you should have your hands on the wheel. Now, when we get on the highway in a little bit, it will show the steering wheel and the hands come off the wheel and then you don't need to have your hands on it at all. And that is a feature called Active Glide. And that is the Lincoln version of Blue Cruise. That is what Ford calls it in the Ford F-150 and the Mustang Mach-E where it's available right now. And that is coming to the Ford Expedition, which is basically the same vehicle as this, just Ford instead of Lincoln bit less luxury, costs a bit less, but you have a lot of the same features. So I'll get into Active Glide more in a minute, but let me talk a little bit more about what's in here. This wood is very nice, and this is uh, open pore wood, and it's got little etched laser engravings in here, and it's got laser etched stuff up there, and it looks very nice. There's a bunch of different versions of the Navigator Black Label, and one of them was Central Park, and that had a uh, just lightly green exterior, like a very, very dark green but the interior had special laser engraving on the bits of wood there, including a bit of a map of Central Park, which is kind of neat. If you're a New York fan, it'll do it. And what they say is that it's meant to be a sanctuary for you in the same way that Central Park is a sanctuary for people who live in Manhattan. Now, if you do own this, you're not going to leave these closed, even though it is very pretty with the wood. If you press this, that pops up. In there is your wireless phone charger. And since this does have Apple CarPlay, you can put your phone in there and it'll charge. And then you do have a bin, a little bit of storage. So I have the key fob in there. And then you've got a USB-A and a USB-C plug. And then if you want to, you can close that and hide away your phone. In this, two cup holders, a little bin there that is big enough to hold my phone. And it's got a little rubber bin that can go on the bottom. So if you do like get crumbs dropped in there, you can pull out that little rubber thing and clean it out. That's kind of neat. This opens and this is an enormous bin in there. You can fit all kinds of stuff. There's an enormous space under here and you could put a purse there, a handbag, that kind of thing. It, it's really big and you could fit a lot of stuff down there. I like that a lot. That's a great use of space under here. And there's a couple dividers and compartments and things. And so you could put all kinds of stuff down there. And then you've got a decent sized glove box, 
over here in the door pockets. You've got a cup holder and some other space there. And then you've got a little like map pocket, whatever thing on the side here. And so this sender console feels really big, but you actually have a whole bunch of storage room underneath it. At the back here, you do have a little control. One button turns the auto start stop on and off. And then it has a button here to turn the auto hold on and off. And what that does is if you pull up to a stoplight and stop, it will keep the car stopped and you don't have to hold your foot on the brake, which sounds like a little thing, but it's actually quite a nice feature. And then you have a button that turns the active park assist on and off. And this can automatically detect a parking spot, whether it's parallel that you're backing into or perpendicular, like in a mall parking lot or something. And it can auto back in to the perpendicular or the parallel spot and park out so we can pull you out of the spot as well. This is quite a large vehicle. That's a very nice little feature. Of course, in a luxury car now that costs this much money, around $115,000 for this version, does have 360 degree camera and a whole bunch of different camera modes. So it can look forward, it can look backwards, it can show like around corners a little bit. It, it's got a whole bunch of different camera modes. It can help with towing. That's actually a really cool feature. Pro Trailer Backup Assist helps steer the trailer in a way that makes sense. If you want the back end of the trailer to go right, you turn to the right. And what this does is it turns the steering wheel for you. So you take your hands off the wheel entirely. When you're towing, it's a little counterintuitive, especially if you don't tow very much. You have to turn the wheel to the left to make the trailer go right and turn the wheel to the right and make the trailer go left. If you don't tow very often, it can be very confusing and hard to do. And when you're trying to back your boat down the ramp or something, you can be sitting there and trying to figure it out. And that's really annoying. What this does is it lets you just, I want to go to the right, turn the wheel to the right. I want to go to the left, turn the wheel to the left. That's it. This little button helps you back up so much easier than trying to figure it out. And the reason they have it on here is the same reason they have it on the Ford F-150. It's because people who own a Navigator may not tow as often as someone who owns like an F-250 Super Duty or something like that. And so that feature is there to help them make it a little bit easier for them to back up, a little bit lower pressure. One of the things that they've done for the Navigator with this version, this is the latest version of Pro Trailer Backup. And it doesn't need a sticker anymore. It used to be there was this very elaborate process to connect the trailer and make it work and you had to measure things and put a sticker on and go for this whole thing. They've gotten rid of that. You don't even need a sticker anymore. It just needs some contrast. They do have the sticker and if you want it to work better, you can put the sticker on, but it's not necessary. And so you just hook up the trailer, turn it on and it'll say, okay, drive forward a little bit. And then it'll say, okay, turn to the left, turn to the right. And it analyzes how the trailer moves and it makes it all work. So that helps with a trailer, helps you tow. You got a trailer brake control here because this is based on a Ford F-150. It has a 400 and something horsepower engine. It's a, a 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Boost V6, got plenty of horsepower, and actually this thing really hauls when you put your foot down. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on Active Glide. And so we're gonna move over here. We're on a limited access highway. So it is limited to what Ford calls blue zones, which is 130,000 miles that they've mapped out of limited access highway. And basically what you want is no cross traffic, no traffic coming the other direction, just all the cars going the same direction. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this button and that turns on the cruise control and there it is. And it says in the corner, hands-free, it just shows the steering wheel logo. There's no hands on it. And I can actually see it up in the HUD there and it's got just the steering wheel and it's, it's pretty clear of what it's doing and that the car is in control right now. And so it's not self-driving because I still have to pay attention. And basically the rule there, if it's self-driving is can you take a nap or not? And so there are no self-driving cars on the road today. And so what we can do is just drive down the road and the car will do all the steering. So how this works is uh, there's cameras up there and there's radar and so it's watching the road and basically what it's trying to do is to look at the lane lines and it uses the forward facing camera, it uses the cameras in each of the wing mirrors to look down and see where the lane lines are and then it just keeps you in the lane. And what it's doing, this is very clever. There's a camera right here in the steering wheel and it's an infrared camera and it's watching my eyes and my head to see where I'm looking. And so as long as I keep looking forward, I don't have to steer. It will do the steering for me, it maintains speed and it just drives along. And so if I look away for too long, 
and I'm not going to actually look away. I'm just going to hold this so it can't see my eyes anymore. That's what it does, and it complains, and it says, watch the road. And so if I keep holding it here, it's going to start complaining more, and then it disconnects entirely, and it says, resume control, beep, 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 beep. And then, it's pretty cool, it does, it jerks the brakes, and it's like, oh, and that's really neat because it sort of tries to wake you up and be like, hey, pay attention. Because if the alert didn't tell you, and it going bong, 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 if that's not enough to get your attention, and then it starts like beep, 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 and getting really upset, it starts jerking the brakes, and it starts doing that even harder. And I'm not going to let it do it because we're here on the highway, and I don't want the people behind me to hit me which is why I'm actually going to turn the speed up here a little bit. It's a, a safety feature so that you're, you're riding along, it's doing its thing, and if you, say, looked at your phone, not that anyone would ever do that, right? If you look at your phone for too long, look away, talk to your passenger, whatever, or have a medical emergency, it's going to do that and then stop the car. And so what it does is it sort of does that herky-jerky of the brakes to try and get your attention. And then if you still don't pay attention, it disables and the car comes to a stop. And it does come to a stop in your lane, so it doesn't pull it to the side of the road or anything. But that's still a far better alternative than, oh, I've had a heart attack. I can't steer anymore. The car, the car has to take over. As long as we're driving along here and I just look forward, no hands on the wheel, just keep them here on my on my thighs. So if I do need to take over, I can. On a big open road like this, it's the middle of the day, great visibility. You shouldn't need to do anything. And so this car just pulled in front of me. It detects that, and so it slows down. And I can change the amount of spacing between the car in front of me and me, so I'll set that to the minimum. And then it picks up speed a little bit, and we're back driving along. This is such a handy feature for people who commute or drive long distances. And if you think about the Navigator, it's definitely a road trip car and people are gonna drive this on interstate, go visit the grandkids or something like that. This is a really handy feature for that because you can just drive along. Oh, now it says keep hands on steering wheel. It's either that this corner is too sharp for it or the camera here couldn't quite make out the lane lines. But then it just took back over and it says hands free again and so I can take my hands off the wheel. It just watches the lane lines, keep us between them, and it has a car to follow, which it always likes to have so it can make sure, is that car going where it expects it to go? Yes, okay, so it's gonna just drive us along. So if you're driving this car and you're commuting or you're on a road trip or whatever, this is so much more relaxing than needing to steer and it sounds like a really silly thing, but all I have to do is sit here and it's comfortable and I just watch the road and what you're looking for is to make sure nothing weird happens. Make sure there's no deer coming in from the side of the road or a police officer or a fire truck in the middle of the road that you're going to need to slow down or avoid or whatever. This won't stop for a fire truck or construction equipment or anything like that. It just isn't equipped to do that with the sensors that are on board. And so you just got to watch out for weird stuff. Other than that, it steers itself down the road. Now this is version one. Future versions of it will do things like if I turn on the left turn signal, it will change lanes. But this one doesn't. I have to manually change lanes. And then Active Glide will take back over. And so I change lanes back over. I get the indicator with the steering wheel with the hands on it. And so it says, okay, you're still in charge. You drive along and then it takes back over. So this feature, which is called Active Glide in Lincoln and Blue Cruise in Ford vehicles is available now on the Mustang Mach-E, on the new Ford F-150, on now the Lincoln Navigator for 2022, and on the new Ford Expedition, and it will be coming to other vehicles. But this is one of the biggest rollouts of a, a feature like this. So this is similar to Cadillac's Super Cruise, which is now GM Super Cruise. And there are subtle differences between Blue Cruise and Super Cruise. For the most part, it doesn't really matter about it. Super Cruise is a better system. It works a little bit better. It's a little more reliable. Um, Ford has told me that this is version one and there are more features to come and it will get better and they're going to do over the air updates and add things like the um, lane changes and things. So you'll just turn on the turn signal and it'll automatically change lanes for you and then come back and just new stuff is going to come. But for now, it does one thing, drives down the highway and steers for you and you don't have to have your hands on the wheel as long as you watch the road. 
So I don't have to have my feet on the pedals. I don't have to have my hands on the wheel. As long as I'm looking forward, it's happy. It is interesting how it doesn't take very long for it to complain. So if I look over here at, say, the navigation screen, it's going to complain at me and say, watch the road. So if you look away and you're looking at your phone, if you're looking at the screen, if you're looking at your passenger, if you're looking at the camera because you're shooting a YouTube video, it's going to say, hey, you need to pay attention. So it's important to know that it is not self-driving, it's not autonomous because you can't take a nap. You have to keep paying attention and there's the cameras that are monitoring you to make sure uh, that you are paying attention. And they do work pretty much with sunglasses. They'll work if uh, for, for different shapes of eyes, different ethnicities. It just studies basically which way your head is looking and then it looks for the irises of your eyes and looks for which way those are looking. Because it's an infrared camera, it does work at night as well. And so it you know, just works and it monitors you. And it's important to know that the camera is not really a camera. It's head tracking and eye tracking. So it's not like it's recording video of you. There actually is no video that can come out of this at all. And so all it does is it sends a little information to the computer, which way is your head looking, which way are your eyes looking. And so as long as you keep looking ahead, so here's something weird on the road, there was a bit of tire, and so I can just take the wheel and gently steer around it and then let go again, and it stays hands-free. And so yes, the car is monitoring you and it's watching which way you're looking, but it's only doing it to make sure that you're paying attention and keep everything safe. What's gonna be interesting going forward is as driver monitoring systems like this are brought into more cars, they're good for a few different things. And one is using a system like this where it has to make sure you're watching the road so the car can steer itself, but knows that you're still in charge. But it can also be used for drowsiness detection if you start like nodding your head or whatever, or if you're drunk and it knows that you're looking in other directions, it'll be able to say, hey, maybe you shouldn't be driving, maybe you need to pay attention, or maybe you need to take a nap and come back and drive more later. So there are two screens, one on the back of each seat, and they're running an automotive version of Amazon Fire TV. And in some ways, it's basically two tablets slapped onto the back of the seats, but they have touch screens and they have all of the software that can run on an Amazon Fire TV stick or whatever. So that includes Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, YouTube TV, Sling, all of those like video streaming services are on there. And what they do is those tablets can connect to the Wi-Fi network that's in the car because this has a Wi-Fi hotspot built in and then stream video to the back seats. There are Bluetooth headphones for each TV. And so your kids can be back there, have those on, and they can be streaming Netflix or whatever, watching stuff while you're up in the front, not listening to them, listen to Netflix, or they can actually connect to the stereo up here so you can play that through uh, the stereo in the car. And so if they're back there watching a movie or watching a football game, everybody can listen to it and uh, they can watch it in the back. That is incredible for in-car entertainment for road trips and things like that. And there are a few things I wish it would do, like it doesn't automatically restart a show if you turn the car off and turn it back on. That's a little annoying, but for the most part, you go back there and you can just start a show and the kids will be entertained and that's fantastic. I don't know why it took so long because we've had smart TVs for like eight years or something. Why did it take so long to put those in a car? I just wanna stream Netflix. I've got it on my phone. Why is my phone better than a $3,000 option in the car to put these big screens? For a long time, the screens in the back of luxury cars like this have been useless. Maybe you had an HDMI port and you could bring an Apple TV or Amazon Fire Stick and plug it in or maybe you had a Blu-ray or a DVD player and you could bring that along, but it wasn't a good experience. It sucked. That's like a killer app in this car to begin with. So I actually have to move over here because I want to take this exit and let me see if I can sneak in somewhere. So I, when you hit the brakes, it turns off active glide and it's just like turning off the cruise control in your car and it just starts slowing down. So I pulled in behind the truck. There it goes and it takes over the steering again. So we're only going 10 miles an hour behind this truck, but I don't have to do anything. It's just so much nicer to have it do that stuff. You know, normally you get into stop and go traffic and it's just stop and go and stop and go and it just gets frustrating. And here it's just, just driving along and the car's doing all the annoying stuff for me. 
I don't know if the Navigator quite lives up to the sanctuary that Lincoln says it is. This truck does have a slightly firmer ride than I would like, and it's a little bit rougher, it's a little bit trucky, but it is a 6,000 pound enormous SUV, and so there's only so much you can beat physics into submission. And it does have those huge 22 inch wheels. Maybe the ride is slightly better in the Escalade, but unless you drove them back to back, you wouldn't know it. And if you think about the type of vehicle that a Navigator buyer is gonna be upgrading from, probably another Navigator, or maybe like a BMW X5 or something like that, which has a pretty firm ride on its own. But it does have a new feature where it uses the cameras to observe the road that's ahead of you and sort of prime the suspension if there's gonna be a big bump or something like that. And one of the other journalists earlier on the drive, he went over this big like railroad jump, not a jump, but a railroad crossing, and he thought it was gonna be a real jolty experience. And he said it was actually pretty good. Between Active Glide and having the rear seat entertainment, which the Escalade doesn't have. It does not have the streaming Netflix, blah, blah, blah. You have to bring like a fire stick or something and plug it in. That makes this the winner. And if I were in the market for a full-size luxury SUV, I would put a Navigator in my driveway. Now that you've watched this review, click here and watch this other review, which I think you'll also find very interesting. Though when I'm recording this, I don't know which one it is, but it'll be good. Click here.